So I love this story. This is from The Independent, because we're independent. Uh -huh. Independent Climate News, written by Louise Boyle, senior climate correspondent. Wow, she reports on the weather. Uh, so she writes, climate misinformation is mutating on YouTube. Oh, no. Listen to this. Climate misinformation is rapidly mutating across social media, <laughs> allowing nefarious actors. I'd like to thank the Academy. Nefarious actors to skirt restrictions and continue to profit. Oh, my gosh. Now. Let me just run this through globalist left lingo, you know, through a, a disinformation translator. Uh, what they say when they say climate misinformation, it actually means something closer to climate opinion or perspective that may differ from the left wing approved narrative that the earth is melting and we're all going to die under a decade uh, unless we eat bug tacos and ride bicycles everywhere. It's going to be great. If you disagree with that, you're a, what'd she say? Nefarious actor. Now, this article from the British news outlet, The Independent, which it isn't, mentions a, quote, nonprofit research group called the Center for Countering Digital Hate. That sounds great, right? They just released a report about how Google is allowing so much climate misinformation to profit from videos on YouTube. The article mentions me, uh, quote, conservative firebrand Glenn Beck, which has <laughs> me all over, and Blaze TV. And they say that we're purveyors of climate change denial, according to this report, by the Center for Countering Digital Hate. I don't deny that climate is changing. It's always changing. The CCDH report sounds the alarm regarding, quote, new denial about climate change. You see the old timey denial, you know, that meant you just straight up don't believe climate change is real. That's not bad. That's bad, but not, not this bad. The CCDH says the old timey denial is now being replaced by a new wave of nefarious denial that says, quote, the impacts of global warming are beneficial or harmless. I've never heard that one. That climate solutions won't work. Uh-huh, that, I've, I've said that one. And that climate science and climate movement may be unreliable. Wow, now I'm a climate denier. I'm dangerous and nefarious because I said those two things? Isn't it amazing how they just broaden the definition of climate change denial, making that entrapment noose larger and larger? Oh, don't worry, people on the left. Oh, soon that, will, that little noose will be big enough to grab you by the neck, too. Now, according to this anti-hate group, you cannot question whether the climate overlord solutions will work. Of course they will work! In America, we used to call that uh, policy debate. This group is saying you cannot even question the climate science, nor question whether the climate movement can be trusted. Now, I thought asking questions was the whole basis of science, but then again, I was very little and very small. I'd like more science, please. Maybe science has changed since those good old days. Now, this is comically absurd, yet the underlying mission of this group is nefarious. Let me use a new word, insidious. They are equating perspectives other than the approved globalist narrative with hate. So what is the Center for Countering Digital Hate? I mean, it sounds important, right? I mean, hate with a capital H. Wow. I mean, that's a crystal clear legal definition there. We need as many watchdog groups as possible hunting down the haters, right? So where, who are they? Where do they come from? Well, they're based in London. The CCDH now has a branch in Washington, D.C. No, it's gone global. Now, it was started in 2017 by, uh, what's his name? Emron Ahmed. He's a former advisor to the Labour Party uh, members of British Parliament. Oh, so it's kind of like public-private, except 
he was out of the government. Now, according to the in-depth report by Paul Thacker for Tablet Magazine, Ahmed is persistently rumored to be working with British intelligence. But why would spy agencies be involved in this? <laughs> Regardless, the CCDH has multiple connections to the British government, past and present board members, including a member of parliament, the strategy director in the office of former UK Prime Minister Gordon Brown, the former British ambassador to Israel, chief of staff of former UK Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg, and the campaign director for the Labour Party. Wow. Wow. Wait, I'm trying to get my... Why are all of those people concerned about the blaze and people here in America? In 2020, the CCDH convinced Google to ban the website Zero Hedge from its platform. Now, Ahmed, he said, look, all I'm doing is the comment sections hate. Right. Zero Hedge, apparently on the comment section, had some racist statements related to Black Lives Matter protests. <laughs> I've never seen that anyplace else, have you? Also in 2020, the CCDH got Google to issue the warning to the Federalist news site. Of course, it's practically a Klan headquarters at the Federalist. Um, racism in the comment section related to George Floyd. Uh, okay, then 2021. Ahmed says, I'm like Mr. Smith, except I've got an English accent. I'm just like Mr. Smith, and I want to go to Washington, and I'm going to go as a nonprofit. Oh, that's great. So the so CCDH received its funding through the Schwab Charitable Fund, which means the donors can remain uh, anonymous, which is great. According to CCDH's 21 tax return, Guess who the chief executive officer is? Yeah, Ahmed. And guess who is the only full-time employee? Ahmed. One employee. And he's listed as clocking in 80 hours a week. I mean, why would I pick on him? He's so hard. He's working so hard. He's constantly, I'm stamping out hate. Oh, please. Also listed on the tax return is CCDH's uh, chairman of the board is a guy named Simon Clark. Now, who's Simon Clark? <laughs> I love this. He's a former senior fellow at the Center for American Progress. You remember them, remember? Center for American Progress, started by John Podesta and Hillary Clinton, went on to run Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign in 2016, was big in the Obama administration, loading up the administration with all kinds of progressives. Hey, John Podesta and Hillary Clinton, didn't they start together uh, Media Matters? I think they did. Ah. The Biden administration hired more than 60 people who were either working or had worked at the CAP to fill various White House and executive agency posts, including John Podesta, who now is the president's senior advisor for clean energy. Oh, maybe all those Center for American Progress connections is how this microscopic startup with one main employee could have this report that he must have written by himself plugged directly into the heart of the Biden White House. You see, the same year Ahmed opened the D.C. office, his anti-hate campaign, they released a report on what they termed the disinformation dozen. Yeah. This is a group of 12 individuals that the CCDH claimed said were responsible for spreading what they and later the White House deemed disinformation about COVID and vaccines. Yeah, they said it was unsafe. They said it really hadn't been tried. They said we were being lied to. <laughs> now imagine those hateful lies. Well, here's Jen Psaki. Psaki using the exact same penumbers from the CCDH report when she was still in the White House as the press secretary, July 21. Watch. I think this was a question asked before. There's about 12 people who are producing 65% of anti-vaccine misinformation on social media platforms. All of them remain active on Facebook, despite some even being banned on other platforms. Wow. 
I mean, it's amazing that she had the same information that was taken right out of that report. You know, the report disinformation uh, doesn't. Because there's no way that one man band could have gotten the first year in Washington. Wow, what an accomplishment, huh? As Matt Taibbi reported on the Twitter files, it was discovered that 12 state attorney generals also cited CCDH's disinformation dozen report convince, in convincing Twitter to give strikes or suspend various accounts. So, and guess what? They were Democrat governors. What are the odds? The Center for Countering Digital Hate is now in a legal battle with Elon Musk and X, it used to be called Twitter. CCDH continues working to shoo advertisers away from X. Last July, X sued CCDH for making false claims and alleging hate speech rose on the platform after Musk bought Twitter in October 2022. Yeah, they were the ones that have been saying that the whole time. Oh, I'm sorry, not they. That guy was the one who was spreading that. In late August last year, Jim Jordan subpoenaed CCDH for records related to its alleged interaction with the White House under Biden. When CCDH finally complied with the subpoena, they admitted direct communication with the White House about the disinformation dozen. This, this incredible rise of the Center for Countering Digital Hate now, I'm a cynic, but I think it's a little more than just suspicious, you know? As Paul Thacker put in his report, quote, for a tiny, unknown nonprofit to gain so much attention in D.C.'s crowded, competitive policy state is akin to a pudgy amateur athlete looking like me catching the winning touchdown in the Super Bowl while setting a new world record in a marathon in the same week. Yeah. So very likely, 